Hi guys, the subject today is a Kiev 88, another Ukrainian camera. Since the war is still going on in the Ukraine, I thought this would be an appropriate time and place for this. My uh, thoughts and prayers all to go to the people in Ukraine who are having, well, incredible difficulties at this time. This is a Kiev 88. I got this on eBay several years ago. It cost me $100. Uh, value is on eBay right now would be about $200 plus $50 shipping from the Ukraine or Russia. The condition is it works pretty well, but the shutter speeds are close but not accurate. But that's true of all Kiev 88s. The personal significance is I really wanted a Hasselblad for display. I couldn't afford it. It would be different if I was using a Hasselblad and making money with it or even just taking pictures for fun, but it would just sit on the shelf and collect dust. But I got a hold of this Russian-made Kia 88. It's a copy of the old Hasselblad 1600F. And from 10 feet away, it looks like a Hasselblad. These were made from 1975 to 2009. This particular one was made in 1981. You can tell by the serial number, the first two digits of the serial number on these older models indicates the year they were made. Kiev is a Soviet and Ukrainian brand of photographic equipment, including cameras manufactured by the Arsenal factory in Kiev, Ukraine. The Kiev nameplates show the name Kiev, with older cameras showing it in different Cyrillic languages. Uh, Russian Cyrillic is a little bit different than Ukrainian Cyrillic, and I'm not sure what you would call this one, but that is... Cyrillic language for Kiev 88. They uh, exported them to several different countries and changed the names depending on where they went. The Kiev 88 is the most well-known of all of the Kiev cameras. They were produced for a long time. From 1975 till 2009. Mine was made in 1981. And they're the least expensive entry into medium format single edge reflex that you can get. The quality is not very good, but you know, you get what you paid for. They did make, however, some fairly high quality lenses available at very low prices. So if you were to purchase other lenses than whatever you got with your camera, you'd find a very good selection and some of them are very well known. The advantage of a camera like this, like a Hasselblad 1700F for that matter, would be the removable film backs and the removable finders and it is a single lens reflex with a large format, two and a quarter by two and a quarter inches, six by six centimeters. The front of the camera is pretty simple. This is the shutter release and this is the release for the lens. You just it's a bayonet mount. You press this in, pivot it a quarter of a turn, and lift it out. To put it in, you align this red dot with this red dot. And it snaps in. When it is snapped in, then the center of this red dot is lined up with that one. And of course, the depth of field scale and the distance are all lined up with the center of the camera. This particular lens is a 2.8 and it has uh, f-stops from f22 to f2.8. Not incredibly fast, but then most medium format cameras didn't have very fast lenses. On the top of the camera, there's not a lot to look at here, but what is, uh, is pretty important. This is the viewfinder, and that little button is the viewfinder release. You push it a little to the right that way, and it'll release and pop up. And there you'll get a beautiful view. You can enable this magnifier by pressing this relief button once more, and it will pop up. And then you can look through that through the viewfinder and get a very good and close focus. One of the reasons I wanted to get this camera other than the, just the looks of a Hasselblad was I wanted to take a special picture 
that I'd seen on the internet and wanted to duplicate it with a picture of my wife, which I'll show you uh, in the video in a second. So we'll snap this shut, fold these in in either order, and it snaps shut. The only other indicator on the top is this little lever here, and that's how you release the film back. Now the film back won't release if the dark slide is not in. So right now the dark slide I have pulled out a little bit, and so it won't do anything. But if I have the dark slide all the way in, then you can release the back. The reason I do that is so that you don't accidentally bump this and the film back falls off. So I like to keep the dark slide out just a hair. So at any rate, I'll push the dark slide in. This is how you release the film back. With the film back off, you have access to the back where you can see the metal focal plane shutter. And that's the characteristic of this camera, which they made for many, many years. But it's not the characteristic of Hasselblad's. In 1957, Hasselblad abandoned focal plane shutters and all their shutters are built into their lenses. So as you... Let me fire this off once. And I'll select a slow shutter speed. An 80th of a second. Actually, I'll set it for a half a second. Which you could tell was not very accurate. We'll try that again. There we go. Half a second. Now you'll notice as we crank this, there's the two halves of the focal plane shutter going back across. At fast shutter speeds, they will be together traveling as a slit. One of the nice things about cameras like this is it's very easy to measure how accurate your shutter speed is. All you have to do is use your iPhone or any cell phone that can take video. In the case of an iPhone and most others, you can take at 240 frames per second. You would video while you take a picture and set it at some speed you want to test, like an eighth of a second. And while you're videoing it, videoing the shutter, take the picture, then play back that in your favorite video editing software and count the frames that the window is open and see if they were open for one-eighth of a second. And then you could make a chart and correct for the discrepancies that there might be in the shutter speed. And there will be discrepancies. Now the film back gets a little interesting. This is how you would, you don't have to take the back off to load the film. In fact, I'll put it back on permanently here and show you. Just get these two notches in the bottom and it snaps in. So to load the film, you just release this little lever on the side and pull it out. Here you would put your New film in and get the old film, uh, 120 roll film. So you'd stick the new roll in this side. The old roll has to go on this side where there's this knurled knob. And you'll notice this knurled knob only turns in a clockwise direction. It doesn't turn counterclockwise. So that tells you that the film has to go under and up. And same with this way. There's a roller on each side. And this is the film back. That's the little window to see the film numbers for setting it up in the camera. So you put the new roll in here with the film going under the loop, under here, around, put it in your new spool, get it started, then turn this to bring up the tension and crank it a little bit. You don't have to go very far. You don't want to bring it all the way to number one yet. Then you just put your film back, insert it into the receiver. Turn it slightly clockwise and it'll lock in place. After the film is in, then you use the winding knob on this side, which you can pop open, and you crank that. And what you would want to do is open this window in the back and crank it until you see number one. And when you do, you close that, you lock this, 
and you're ready to take pictures. All right, now let's look at the right side. Here's where you set your shutter speed. In this case, shutter speeds are available from with the B and a half a second up to a thousandth of a second. And you can lift this up and turn it either direction and set it in. There's some controversy. Some people believe you should only turn it clockwise. Other people say only counterclockwise. The reality is you can turn it in either direction. Just it turns freely. But it's very important that you always have it cocked before you try and change the shutter speeds. If you don't, you can damage the camera. And it tells you that in the directions if you download the directions online or if you got them shipped with your camera. So that's where you set your shutter speed. Right now it's at a thousandth of a second. You'll notice these indicators on the side are both white. Um, the indicator on the film magazine, white means that that piece of film has not been exposed. And the indicator on the right that's white means that the shutter is cocked. So if I fire the shutter, if I could fire the shutter, the shutter won't fire because I had the dark slide in. If I pull the dark slide out, or even for that matter, if I pull it out just a little bit so I'm tricking the camera, then I can fire the shutter. So here we are at a 60th of a second, 80th of a second. I'll set it for 1 250th. When you fire the shutter, you notice, I've got to push this in a little ways. You notice that indicator is red, and that indicator is red. That means that the shutter has fired, and this means that that piece of film has been exposed. As I cock it again, it cocks both the film and the shutter. And again, I'll fire it again. You'll see this is turning because it, it's advancing the film, even though there is no film in this camera, it doesn't know any better. And this little window here shows a film counter. Now the film counter is blank because there is no film in here to advance that part. So that's the shutter has been fired, shutter hasn't been fired. This is the film has been exposed, film hasn't been exposed. When you cock it forward, they're both white. And the film advance thing is trying to move. I can see a number in there now, barely in the light. Okay, on the left side of the camera, here's a cold shoe for mounting a flash. Here's a sync port for sync, flash sync. Right now it's set on X sync for electronic flash. If you turn this dial that way, you can get it on FP for photo flash bulbs. Um, this does turn, but it turns very hard. This is a lug for a neck strap. So is this a lug for a neck strap on the other side. On the film bottom, we have two tripod sockets. No wimpy quarter 20 sockets. These are 3 8 inch tripod sockets for a nice hefty. The one in the front, of course, would be for when you have longer, heavier lenses on it to help balance it a little. And of course, if you had a huge lens on it, there may be a mount on the lens to hold everything. On the back, this was the window where you set the film to number one when you first load it. And when the cover's closed, there's a little dial here as a reminder for your film type and film speed, the ASA and the ISO numbers. So that's it. A cheap replacement for a Hasselblad. It works. I don't take pictures with it. I only wanted to put it on the wall and observe it as, as a display. But it's a beautiful camera. Like I said, they don't, they're not high quality cameras and they're inexpensive, especially when compared to a real Hasselblad. If you wanted to take two and a quarter by two and a quarter medium format photography 
as a hobby and you can't afford a Hasselblad, I would really suggest you get an inexpensive twin lens reflex camera, which would be much more reliable. You'd learn just as much and you could take wonderful pictures with it. When I bought this one, it didn't come with a dark slide. I had to order a dark slide separately online. When you put the dark slides in, you wouldn't think it would matter, but there's a little lip that curls around and holds this lever that pulls it in and out, and this lip should always be facing forward. So you want to be sure when you put these things in, which is not easy, that you have that lip facing forward. When it's all the way in, you can release the back. And let me take it off one more time. The uh, whole viewfinder just slides out the back. If you wanted to change your viewfinder, that's the um, ground glass screen. Super easy to get at and clean. And they do make pentaprism heads for these cameras. And I have one that I could put on, but I wouldn't do it because that would ruin the looks of it. Pardon my fumbling. I'm trying to get this back together again. And again, I always pull this dark side out just a hair so that it locks and you can't accidentally remove the back. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.